somebody. <laughs> As I pass along, if I could help somebody with the word, with the song, if I could show my brother when he or she is going wrong, then truly and surely my living will not be in that. God is good all the time. I am so thankful to the God above for empowering me to stand before you this morning. Realizing it is not me, but it is the glorious gospel. It was the glorious gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who hath enabled me, Paul said, and counted me faithful yeah. by putting me into his ministry. Yeah. I tell folk all the time, if he never does yeah. another thing, yeah. what he's already done yeah. is another yeah. I'm so happy to be standing in front of you. I thank God this congregation. Uh, one of my wife's favorite songs is a song by Marvin Sapp. And the song is entitled, I Never Would Have Made It Without You. And the last year of my life has been the roughest year of my life.
shall I give first? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fainted. Though an host should have kept me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise up against me, in this will I be found. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his provision. In the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me upon, he shall hide me and set me upon a rock. Now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yeah, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, seek my face, my heart, said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Lead me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. Yes, when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are rising up against me, and such breath of cruelty. I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, wait on the Lord. In verse 1, David says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I feed? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I like to put a tag on this text. And I'd like to talk to you on the subject. I ain't never scared. <laughs> I'm a fan of hip hop music. <laughs> Brother Barry always says I'm part of that K104 <laughs> generation. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be true with mine. I admit <laughs> that I listen to other types of music other than gospel music. <laughs> But some years ago, uh, six or seven years ago, there was a rapper named Bone Crusher. Bone Crusher. And Bone Crusher wrote and entitled a song called, I Ain't Never Scared. Now, if you looked at Bone Crusher, you will see why Bone Crusher wasn't ever scared. Bone Crusher was about six foot two, about 400 pounds. He was this huge mass of humanity. And who would dare mess with someone that big? The whole point of his song was that to let everybody listening know that he was never Escaped. No matter where he went, no matter who he was with, and no matter what hood he ended up in, he was never escaped. And you see, I'm a Christian, and uh, you know, you know, Christians sometimes don't listen to that type of music. But to be sure, uh, you know, the words of Bone Crusher's song are not to be recited in this holy place. <laughs>
these interrogative yeah. questions, like these bold assertions, these bold affirmations in verse 1 of Psalms 27, they don't need to go unnoticed. Listen again right. to the declarative statements he makes. The declarative statements, the Lord is my light. Yeah. The Lord is my salvation. Yeah. The Lord is the strength of my life. Yeah. And with those declarative statements, he follows them up with interrogative questions that need to be asked and answered. He says, whom shall I be? Yeah. Of whom, he says, shall I be afraid? Yeah. If you know the Lord is your might. Yeah. If you know the Lord is your salvation. Yeah. If you know the Lord is the strength of your life, who are you going to be scared of? Yeah. What is there to fear? What problem can grip you and disallow you to have the progress that you need to have? May I share something with you? And I hope you haven't got bored with it yet. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my salvation. And the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now, now, how does he say this? How does he make these bold assertions? How does he stand so flat-footedly and make these claims? Well, if you kept your Bible open, if you kept your app unlocked, please look again at verse 27. And it seems to me that the psalmist goes through these 14 verses, he's real clear on who God is mm -hmm. and what God has done and why he can make these statements. It is the thesis statement in verse 1. But the next 13 verses undergirds and supports his thesis statement. With those words, he helps me to understand that there is no reason to fear anything that should come up into our lives. I know fear shows up. <laughs> Let me say that again. I know fear shows up. But the last time I checked my Bible, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7, the Bible says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. How does he make these claims? I'm so glad you asked that question this morning. Because if you keep on reading in your Bible, look at verse 2. Verse 2 reads, when the, wicked, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me, eat up my flesh. Yeah. They stumbled and fell. You want to know why David can make these statements? Number one, he can make these statements because of his triumphs in God. All too often, church family, isn't it so true that we talk so much about our tragedy? We talk so much about our troubles. We talk so much about our triumphs. But we neglect to remember how many triumphs we had in God. And the truth of the matter, brothers and sisters, there are some brothers and sisters who can testify in this sanctuary that every day ain't been a bad day. Every day ain't been a good day. There have been some days when I had to smile on my face all day long. So the Lord and show me his mercy and his magic and love and kindness and I'm so grateful yes, for my triumphs in God. And somebody in this sanctuary can testify that there have been days when you just had to thank God all day long for walking with me and talking with me and holding me and keeping me because I've had some triumphs in my life. And I'll tell you something, I'll tell you some young folk and everybody in here. This is a good homework assignment. Every now and then, just pause in the middle of your day. Thank you, Jesus. And just start writing down all the good things God has done for you. Just pause and start writing down. And you'll find out like the songwriter who wrote the song, all of my good days, I weigh my bad days. And so I won't complain. Is there anybody in here that say, God has been good to me? And instead of complaining, I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Here in the text, let me, let me keep on going. Here in the text, David says, when my enemies and my foes came upon me yes, to eat up my flesh. They stumbled. You see that? And fell. Yes, verse 3. Look at verse 3. The Bible says, though an host should have kept me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise up against me. In this will I be confident. Please watch the text. Not only am I not afraid because of my triumphs in God, 
But secondly, I'm not afraid because of my trust in God. He says, in this will I be confident. And I love the way he makes a statement about his confidence in God. He says, I trust in God. Because I've seen how God has worked wonders and miracles in my situation. And because I've had some trials, I've learned to trust him all the more. And you know, the old folk, I know we don't sing it no more in the contemporary church, of Christ, But the old folk used to sing a song, I will trust yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. I know we don't sing it anymore. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that he spent with God. He spent his time in worship. He spent his time in warfare. He spent his time in praise. He spent his time, he talks about just lifting up the name of Jesus. He says in verse 4, listen to what he says. He says, one thing I desire, Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his now, David gives us a picture of worship. I like this. For every believer ought to have a good, qualitative worship life. A life that ensures that no week will ever go by without you worshiping God and the beauty of this holiness. Can I push that all you just a little further? Because I got a funny feeling. And a sticky suspicion. And if you really believe it like you say you are, your worship service should not just, be, just simply be contained to the Dallas Man Church of Christ. Every believer ought to spend some time every day in worship every day of your single life. If the truth be told, there were some folk who were worshiping today on their way to worship this morning. If the truth be told, you got up and you were worshiping God before you left your house this morning. Do you want to know how worship is going to be good when you worship on your way to worship? When you start talking to God on your way to talk to God. If you had some more moments of talking to God before you got here, he wouldn't have to pump you up.
I will sing praises unto the Lord. He says, I don't only spend time in worship. Now all my time is not spent in warfare. Some of my time has been spent in praise. Now don't get quiet here. Because this is when the church is supposed to make the voices. Because it's a sad Christian who can't praise God every now and then. I mean, I know you come to worship to be right with the Lord. <laughs> and I know you come to worship to be at the expected place on Sunday morning. But when you get here, you're not only expected to worship God, but we are likewise expected to praise God. I love worship. I love worship. The word worship literally comes from the word that means worth-ship. W-O-R-T-H. Worth-ship. It means I worship God based on how much he's worth, W-R-T-H, to me. Did you catch that? Worth-ship. When I think about God's worth, my worship is intensified. When I think about how God blessed me, and how God saved me, yeah. and how God delivered me, his worship goes up. But yeah. I think about how God's opened doors for me, yeah. and liberated me, yeah. and given me joy in yeah. the midst of my sorrow, yeah. his worship goes up. But yeah. I think about how many, how God has made so many provisions for me, yeah. and I know, man, and, and, and only do I not think about what he provided. Yeah. I think about what he prevented. Today, but to somebody has a high worth for God. Mm -hmm. And you don't care what somebody says, you came to church with your hands lifted up. Because you understand, not only have I to worship God, but also I have to praise God. Everybody don't have the same word for God. But the last time I checked, in Psalms 150, the Bible says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. God is worthy. Oh, the prince. He spent some time with God. He says, I spent time in worship. I spent some time in warfare. I spent some time in praise. And then those latter verses, he says, I spent some time in prayer. Can I be honest with you today? You cannot be a strong Christian and not pray regularly. Notice I didn't say every now and then. <laughs> every believer ought to pray every day. Verse 7, I'm, verse seven, I'm closing now. I'm winding up. He says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me and answer me. He says, I mean, if you got up and came to worship and you haven't talked to God yet, you might need to check your relationship. <laughs> Every now and then, you ought to call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. And let me say this, church. Every prayer ain't petition. Some prayers are just thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me in right mind. In my right mind. But not let me go off with them co workers. Yeah. Lord, thank you. But let, not let me curse them out. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me in right my mind. Lord, thank you for keeping me, for keeping me spiritual in that situation. He said, I spent some time in prayer. And listen, y'all. And I want everybody to hear this. You don't get strong just by friends. And we have so lifted up praise in the contemporary church of Christ. 
that we have some kind of way thrown a shadow on praise and worship. I mean, on, on prayer and worship. Because it's all about praise. Now, now, now. You come, let me close. Let me close. <clears throat> Not a week goes by when I don't get a phone call from another preacher in our brotherhood. And they asked me my position. <laughs> On praise. Man, what's your position? And try to get you to choose side. What do you, what do you think about praise teams, man? What do you think about praise? I said, we ain't got that wrong with praise teams. I ain't got no problem with praise teams. As long as the scripture don't condemn it, I'm not going to condemn it. But if that's what you like, do you. <laughs> don't put a DMV for doing me. <laughs> but I tell my friends, worship goes further than praise. In the New Testament, there were 27 references of praise. All of them are thanking God. But in John chapter 4, and I believe in verse 24, the Bible says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must. Now the must in the Greek is an in fact. It is not optional. Praise is optional. And praise is thanking God on what he does. Praise is the illustration. Praise says, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, 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 for my car, Lord. Lord, you know, this is your car, Lord. You know my credit wasn't good enough, Lord, but you let me get this car, Lord. You said, that's praise, that's praise, that's praise. Praise is saying, thank you, Lord, for, 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 for letting me get this apartment, Lord. You know that I was at the bottom of the list, Lord, but you moved me up the list, Lord, and you let me get in this apartment, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for letting me get in this apartment, Lord. You said, thank you, Lord, for this house, Lord. Lord, you know I wasn't supposed to get this house, Lord, but you let me get in this house, Lord. That's praise. You said, thank you, Lord, for letting the doctors find a, find a spot, Lord. Lord, I could have been there to go, Lord, but you let the doctors find a spot on me, Lord. Thank you. That's praise. But worship goes further than that. Worship says, if I ain't got the house. Worship says, if I ain't got the car. Worship says, And he says in verse 13, I would have fainted unless I, unless I never see the goodness of the Lord. Our young people are scared. I'm scared. I'm fearful. This has been one of the worst years of my life. Uh, and I, 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 I told my wife, we was getting so much bad news, I felt like Joe. I don't even want to hear nothing. She said, baby, I got some news for you, I don't even want to hear. I don't, I don't even want to hear it because I felt like I was gripped by fear. And our young people are gripped by fear. I was um, in children's Bible hour about, about three weeks ago. And um, tell the truth, Shane, no. Yeah. I got drafted to teach that Sunday. Yeah. And uh, some of the children in Children's Bible Hour brought some stuff to, to my attention. And we talked about stuff in class. <coughs> and some of, some of them were, were, were scared. What's happening? What's happening? What Adam, come here. Come here for a second. Now, this is how I want our young men. And I ask, you know, I always ask the class, what, is, what are you afraid of? What are you scared of? You know, we talk about Psalm 27. And, and, and it's going to shock you when Evan told me. What did you tell him, Evan? I'm scared of faith. <laughs> he said, 
I'm scared of spiders. Evan said, did you hear what he said? Evan. Evan the seventh day of the day. Evan told me in class, but since you're my witness, Evan told me I am scared of the police. Here's a seven-year-old child telling me I was scared of the police. Also, uh, Cece. Cece, Cece, one of my favorites. Cece, tell me what Cece, Cece deep. Song. Uh, and, 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 and 
This is wedding season. We've got a couple of invitations in the mail. In fact, I'm doing a ceremony here in a couple of weeks. And they tell you to RSVP on the invitation just to let them know if you're coming. Why? Because they can save a seat for you. Jesus says, I want you to RSVP in heaven. Because he says, he who confesses me before me, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. Jesus is saying, let me RSVP your place in heaven. If you're here, maybe you're fearful of something's going on. Let's have a big old prayer service this morning. Let's, let's break it to God. And a lot of times you don't, a lot of people say, well, break it to God. I don't feel like filling out a call. You don't have to fill out a call. Just say, look, I need to pray. Because you don't have to tell me. God already knows. Just come down here and say, I need prayer. That's all. And we'll pray for you. If you're here, you got to remember the Lord's church. How do you come about doing that? You hear the word of God. You believe with all your heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. You repent of your sins. And we'll take you down in the watery grave of baptism. You become a new creature in Christ. All things are passed away and all things are become new. If you're here, you need to respond. You don't even have to wait. Just come on right now as we stand and sing the song. Thank <laughs> you.